Hey everyone, this is Neil, one of the developers of Bacon Man, and you're listening to the Bam Whamma Jamma Bamsters Rated R Podcast. All right, and we are back with another interview. Dracon is here, and today with me, I have Yo Jolly Roger. Yo, what's up? And today, we're going to get to get a little more in depth on something that has essentially weaved every interview we've ever done together. Like, there's been one staple question, and it's kind of weaved everything together. And that's bacon. We're going to talk about a game called Bacon Man and Adventure. And we're going to be talking with Neil Lorenza. I said that correct, right? 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 Yeah. Hell yeah. And he's going to be talking about his game being put out by Skymap Games, I do believe. Yeah, that's correct. Skymap Games. I'm just happy I said name right. Like, I grew up so many names, even asking how to pronounce them. No, you're good. I mean, we were just talking a second ago that you guys have names very similar to uh, some uh, crappy Disney Channel stuff. So Draconis and Jolly and Josh uh, people, right? I mean, you guys are just like, what, Nickelodeon dudes, right? Is that your deal? <laughs> I, I, I guess I'm kind of upbeat and he's kind of nerdy. So yeah, that could work. Yeah, didn't you call him fat earlier or something? I didn't say fat. Like, that never came out of my mouth. <laughs> he may be editing this. They've made me sound like a chipmunk before. That's this true. Is- I suppose this is where I try my Cartman voice and I'm not fat, I'm big bone. <laughs> At least you would uh, sound like, I guess supposedly I sounded like a chipmunk for a while because my computer, I, so everyone says, uh, you know, Max are so much easier. You, my freaking computer couldn't record my voice without me sounding like a chipmunk. Oh, it wasn't even a chipmunk, man. It was, it was like a robotic Donald Duck. That's kind of cool though. I mean, that fits with the whole Disney Channel vibe. That's what I was thinking. I was like, we should have been recording then. I really picked the wrong, uh, the wrong nickname coming into the TeamSpeak server because I just put my name. I should have just put Donald Duck. It would have been easy. It would have worked. It would have worked. I do believe it starts you off with, like, Bamster's podcast, which really confused the hell out of me the first couple times. Where, where did Bamster's come from, by the way? Well, as far as I know, one of the individuals that started it all, his, his in-game name and all that stuff is Bam Havoc. And I, I believe we just put Stir. I'm hoping that's all we did to the end of that. I... It kind of predates me a little bit because they'd had a few episodes of the podcast out before I was around. But the the story that I heard was, yeah, it, it is related to BAM. And uh, it was a way for a couple of the guys when they were trying to come up with a name for the group to kind of mess with him. And yeah, they they pretty much just added the stirs onto the end of his name. Who's that? Who's that? Uh, the chef that was always yelling BAM and then throwing spices on people. Oh, the uh, is that the, the Swedish chef? No, I think it's somebody else. It's like a food guy. You go BAM! Yeah, that was his catchphrase. That was his big catchphrase. He'd, yeah, just above the pan, just BAM! Yeah, I remember that. Was it Guy uh, Fieri or something like that? No, but he has... That guy is weird as hell. I mean, <laughs> that guy will eat... Uh, some of the food they have on this, you'd think it, it looks like Vomit City. But yeah, he just shovels on. He doesn't care. <laughs> and if you're listening right now and wondering, how the hell does this have anything to do with a video game? Well, we are talking about Bacon Man. So, food kind of goes hand in hand with that, I suppose. It really does. It, you know, actually, it's funny that you mentioned it. On the ride to work every day, we, we probably have an hour drive. I go and pick up one of my coworkers. <sighs> I swear to God, half the time we talk about it. So, he's like, what did you watch on Food Network last night or something? Or, or, oh yeah, what are you making for dinner? Oh, I'm doing this dumb recipe, probably made of a bunch of prepackaged shit, but I'll pretend that it's fancy. <laughs> so... I guess, where in the world are you guys? Where's the development company? Where's SkyMap uh, Games based out of? So SkyMap Games, we are based out of Manchester, New Hampshire. Uh, We're part of a co-working game assembly. So it's us and uh, probably about eight or nine other developers outside of SkyMap. Um, SkyMap Games is like four people. And then usually we have uh, one or two other developers that join us like part-time or on contract, depending on the project that we're working on. But uh, So some of us live in Massachusetts and we commute up to Manchester. And some of us live in New Hampshire. I, I'm a Massachusetts guy myself. So Draconis, I uh, just want to say this one time. Uh, East Coast, best coast. <laughs> mm, thank you. Thank you. He's always trying to slide that in there. <laughs> <laughs> West Coast is cool too. That, there's definitely far more video game industry out there than there is in uh, Manchester. <laughs> New Hampshire is very, very, very small. I want to say in total, I've met probably 20 to 25 uh, full-time video game developers in the entire state. Uh, Massachusetts is, is probably, I don't know, it's definitely at least at least 500. Well, it's funny because sometimes I'll play along with that East Coast, West Coast thing. But if I'm being honest, either one is fine with me. I have to be careful about how I say that though. But uh, yeah, because I'm originally from Pittsburgh, but I live out in San Diego, so. Ah, gotcha. Yeah, yeah. That could get uh, get hairy. 
So how did you guys get into making video games and pull the team together? So SkyMap started a bunch of total goofballs, myself included, and three other guys, Angelos, Dargagianopoulos, Jonathan Vasquez, and, and Ryan Lefebvre. And we met in college. So we went to uh, all went to Southern New Hampshire University, and uh, which is a school that's also in And we all were really, really hated our school. Uh, <laughs> we just we just hated it so much. They, they weren't teaching the games. And uh, what we started to do was work on some, some game projects on our own. So over the summertime, while everyone else was uh, off doing whatever you do when you're a college student in the summer, probably slacking off, we decided to get together every morning um, and pretty much pull full days. So Bacon Man has spawned out of the, this, this prototype project that we built in Adobe Flash. Uh, but later, we ended up switching it to professional visions, like Unreal, really using. I gotcha. I'm like, what makes you start off with Bacon as your main character? Like, I'm, I love the idea, first of all, but like, what makes you want to make a game on Bacon? <laughs> uh, what would make a better head character, I guess? That's a terrible <laughs> way to put it. Like, Bacon is, for whatever reason, that everybody seems like no matter what. You might have someone that, that doesn't like pork chops or liver and onion. I don't know. I, I guess I haven't met Benny Fake or something. Pretty much everybody seems to So we wanted to make this kind of stupid, and he really fit. He also kind of fit an aesthetic. Um, you guys are you guys play Earthworm Jim? I honestly was always horrible with platformers. Played some, a few, but not so bad at them. That's okay. <laughs> <laughs> You get good when you start making one. <laughs> I would hope so. It would make the development a lot easier, or a lot of cheat codes are going to be put into your game. Yeah, no. Uh, yeah, you know, for whatever reason, Bacon seemed to fit this character that we wanted to make this kind of over-the-top, sort of stupid guy. It is, in some ways, it's danger to everybody else, uh, <laughs> as he is just as he is to himself. He's a sort of anti-hero, and you know, Bacon just, for whatever reason, seemed to fit that that concept of this Herculean kind of character. What's funny you mentioned that everybody likes bacon. Uh, we've had an opportunity when doing this to interview folks from all over the world. So our, our experience has been most people like bacon, but then for various reasons, <laughs> some folks don't consume bacon or don't have access to bacon depending on where they live. Uh, Jolly's run into a few of those have been kind of some funny answers. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll... yeah. It's it's not by choice that they can't enjoy the bacon. I'm just gonna say that. I'm gonna tell you guys a secret you can't tell. Are you ready? Don't break vegetarian. my heart here. I'm a vegetarian. Don't tell anyone though. No. Oh, that, that's like almost a refund. I know. I know. <laughs> here's, so here's what's, here's what's funny. When I started, Bacon uh, was eating, and uh, I think it was kind of a combination of like meeting my girlfriend who's vegetarian, which was probably 90%, and the other 10% of it was staring at it at resource at like uh, source material so much all day every day. That finally, I just kind of like I can't do more. <laughs> it became too much. All right, so you you have an excuse, I guess, but still, that, that hurts to hear. It hurts to hear a little bit. I can imagine some sequels to this game now. Celery Man. Yeah, or uh, was it that Super Meat Boy did the uh, Tofu character? Did you guys hear about that at all? I could see that, yeah. Maybe I didn't, but I was just thinking that Tofu could be something like the uh, arch nemesis of Bacon Man. <laughs> oh, yeah, Bacon Man's arch nemesis Broccoli. But, I could see uh, Tofu guy being like karate and all that stuff, yeah. Yeah, Meep, Meep, Super Meat Boy did this thing where, uh, I can't remember exactly what it was, but they had uh, PETA or some other organism that was going after them. And so they combat it by making this character uh, who was made out of tofu, and he could never jump high enough. He never had enough in his diet to be able to jump high enough to make it across any of the platforms. So you can't play the game with him at all. I, I, I like, like, you take the criticism and you just say, well, how about that? It's too much fun not to, if you have the ability, especially if there's... Because uh, it's PETA. It's a problem with them, yeah. I, I applaud the smart assery here. That That's awesome. Oh, yeah. No, it's 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 good stuff. But I'm definitely, uh, we're doing a Bacon Man launch point. I'm definitely cheating. I'll probably consuming all sorts of delicious grease. Oh, man. Uh, and there's all kinds of recipes. And, and even some stuff that I wouldn't have thought would have been good pairings with bacon. I went to Bacon Fest this past year here in San Diego. And there was one guy that was serving some kind of bacon with some kind of sauce on cucumber and a few other things and it was really good so there's there's lots of options there it's crazy people come up with all sorts of really delicious uh, weird ideas for how to use bacon there's actually um uh, we did a bacon fest up in sherbrooke uh, uh sherbrooke quebec uh, up in canada and 
I was amazed at how many different things people were putting bacon on top of. They had like candles that people were making, the fat or something like that. I was like, what the heck is this? It's crazy. <laughs> it, it's called hangovers. What do we have that I can put with bacon? Yeah, you know, actually, you guys mentioned that some of the podcast friends are from the UK. Is that right? Yes. Yep, yep. Have they talked to you about bacon buddies? This is the first time I've heard that phrase. Oh, you gotta ask. You gotta ask them about that. So I did. I did a podcast a while ago, and um, the gentleman who was interviewing um, he he told me about bacon, but I guess it is something that's very specific uh, to the UK, and uh, it's like bacon and some kind of sauce on two pieces of bread, and that's all it is. And people just eat that as a sandwich. I just want to say for Bam, who will be editing this, that I am very disappointed he did not bring this to my attention before I went to the UK last year. Yeah, Bam, what the heck, man? Come on. Well, it is Bam, so it's very understandable. <laughs> So I guess uh, we should probably bring this around a little bit to the game itself. Uh, can you talk a little bit about the setting and the story that, that you start out with in the game? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So so Bacon Man is, uh, I'll give you a little bit of this. Uh, Bacon Man is heir to, uh, <laughs> so he is supposed to go and eat until his grandfather's, uh, his name is Old King Roast Beef, gets brutally murdered under very mysterious circumstances. And we play the game to find out that potentially all these other food groups so Bacon Man has to fight through all of these foods and reclaim his place as heir to the meat throne. Um, I, I once heard it described, our friend Braxton, who did the meat, described it as uh, um, kind of like Hamlet, but with more ham. I was going to say I, more I like it. ham. <laughs> it's too good. It, it, somehow it all worked out with that. <laughs> we have characters like uh, Pork King and Bacon Man. Do you actually have a Hamlet character? I, I wish that we do have a sauce. He's a sausage sage. He's got like a little wizard hat and everything on. He's he gives cheesy one liners. So you talk to him too. Just bug him and eventually. Yeah, bug him enough and he'll maybe make you go away. I don't know. But yeah, we've got the game's got four playable characters. Um, so there's Bacon Man, Lard Lass, Pan, and Feta. And each of those characters are based on either a food group or just being silly. And uh, each of them have their own unique abilities. So they played very different. Feta, for example, lightweight, and he can't take very much damage, but he can dish out tons and tons of damage. Uh, where Pan has like, more magical abilities, so she can sort of uh, do some different elemental damage to enemies, which is probably a part of the game you never really even notice uh, that <laughs> enemies are weaker towards certain elements. Uh, but hopefully people find that out. I have no idea if you guys thought of this or not. Feel free to use it if you haven't. But do you have a character in there called Bard BQ that maybe is some kind of boss you battle that's uh, making music at you? <laughs> that's actually pretty good. I might steal that one. <laughs> <laughs> someday. Someday. Yeah, so the game launches actually um, March the 6th, I do believe, right? Yeah, that's correct. Um, it launches March 6th after five year, uh, five year development. Really glad to be here. <laughs> I would imagine so. Like, labor. I, I don't know what the expiration date on bacon is. Oh, probably forever. I mean, it's so salted. Leave it in the floor somewhere. Pick it up and eat it later. Post apocalyptic food of choice. What is it that and cockroaching, right? Though I guess you don't eat those, but they supposedly lives through the nuclear. Yeah, they'll bomb. be around when we're gone. You hear that? So it's, it's... If you find if you could have gone down to where the Titanic sunk with the cold water and the salt in there, maybe you could have found some bacon. <laughs> I I, uh, I I like to keep dry, honestly. Wet so bacon is so particularly uh, enjoyable. I well, think crisp is the way to go. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a very soggy experience, I would imagine. Probably the more fat, the more delicious, though, I would imagine. So yeah, it's launching on PC, and like it's it's actually coming on Mac. Like You don't know how happy G is going to be. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you mentioned you have Mac use. Um, yeah, we're going to have it on Peak Mac um, later on Linux. And then um, Xbox One, and we have some. We have another announcement about uh, platforms, but that's not going to be uh, for a little while. No, no, fair enough. I'm just going to say, like right now, we always joke with G. Like the only gaming on his Mac he's able to do is remote play from the PS4. Brutal. There are and a lot of good games. It's on true. PS4. Well, I, I know uh, if you can't make the announcement, uh, you won't say one way or the other probably. But I'm going to nudge you anyway, just so I can get in at Bam. Would that other platform happen to be the Nintendo Switch? Uh, can't say. Can't say yet. <laughs> <laughs> Though it's fun. The Switch is so 
unbelievably popular. I mean, I, I'm hearing every two seconds, every time, everywhere I go, uh, anytime there's a developer's conference or whatever. Oh, is this coming to Switch? Oh, is this coming to Switch? Oh, is this coming to Switch? Like, everybody wants it. Yeah, BAM loves to knock on it because it's a, a mobile console that's not as powerful as the, uh, the PS4 or the Xbox. But, you know, I, that's the great thing about it is that you can take it with you and play, you know, whatever games you have access to on that device. So I, that's one of the reasons I love it is there'll be times when... You know, I want to go somewhere. I know I'm going to have some time to kill, and I can sit down and play, you know, the Switch for a little while. Yeah, I totally agree. I, I love that about them. And it's really amazing what they're able to accomplish for graphics on a chip like that. I mean, I, I can tell you, like, we, it's really hard to optimize to work on mobile. And that's not a super powerful chip. I mean, it's definitely powerful around a lot of modern games, but not, like... I would never have expected that Super Mario Odyssey looks so good and, and runs flawless. They understand the hardware. It's really pretty amazing. Nintendo just always figures out how they could pull off some really awesome stuff with their own. They they know it top to bottom. When I was surprised they opened an indie game market for it pleasantly, though. I mean, I like that they're doing that. I just it was unexpected to me that they were going to do that. Do you do you guys find that you have like too many because of indie games? Sometimes. I know a lot of people have Steam libraries, you know, 600 plus games, and they only really play the same three games over. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what? It's it's not necessarily a bad problem to have. <laughs> oh yeah, definitely. For for the consumer, uh, for players, it's this is the greatest time to be alive. I mean, there's more great video games, television shows, movies, etc. coming out than ever. Uh, for developers, hard. <laughs> it's like... I would imagine. Yeah, there's a lot of saturation. You have to like get in there. Because I myself have like 200 and something games on my, my Steam account. I play mostly on PS4, honestly. Yeah, I play on PS4 a lot. I, I, I have tons of games on Steam. I, I always tend to go back to the same games or the same few genres over and over, weirdly enough. Well, you had mentioned that this will be later coming to Xbox One and Linux, but I'm, I'm kind of curious. I saw something about there being full controller support. Uh, at release and I'm wondering is that specific to like an Xbox controller for PC or Mac or is it both Xbox and PlayStation 4 controllers? Yeah, great question. Um, it's it's pretty much it's pretty much any controller that supports um, so that can be Xbox 360, that can be PlayStation, uh, etc. As long as the computer recognizes it as a game controller, it will probably work with it. And, and I would actually say uh, don't play the game without one because playing the game without a controller is nowhere near it. really is um, a game that plays best on, uh, on controller, on console. Um, not that it plays better on console and PC, but to get that, you really do. So you could play with, say, a keyboard on the on on PC. Does it have customizable keyboard mappings or no? It does not. I wish that it did. On the, to be honest, we've kind of focused more of our attention toward just shifting entirely the controllers. Um, the good news is there are ways that we can add that kind of support later. So if we get enough people who are asking for it, we'll just go and add it in. Yeah, it's something I'll usually ask because I like to see that with PC games, but then with something like this style of game or, you know, even some racing or sports games, I'd probably end up using the controller anyway, so that's understandable. Yeah, I, I just think um, it's actually not something that's super complicated for just to add in under circumstances. Um, in this case, because we just put so much effort into having it play on the controller, we sort of decided, eh, we're not going to worry too much about the keyboard. It's just going to be like one of those things that falls by the wayside a little bit. Uh, but it is playable on keyboard. And you can absolutely beat the game, not get too frustrated. Um, we've, we've done it. It's not the way we enjoy playing it as much, but it's definitely possible. I am uh, somewhat curious, since there is uh, multiple characters you can play with abilities and stuff that... I can't, uh, like, is, like, is there some kind of like internal like one-upsmanship on who can beat the game the quickest? Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, we... <laughs> At one point, we, we made this game really fun for speedrun. So there's a lot of uh, secrets and shortcuts, tricks that you can learn uh, that if you get really smart, the way that you control the characters, you can fly across them. So sort of the beginning of the game, you're running and jumping. Later half of the game, you're really sort of flying it through the air like Goku or something uh, from Dragon Ball. It, like, it's a completely different. Uh, but one of the things that we did was we set up a time trial. And when we were recording the time trial developer runs to see what people would potentially playing against. We were competing against each other a lot <laughs> to try to get the best time for them. I would imagine so. that's that's one of the things when I watch Twitch, like I watch the live streams, uh, the charity speed running 
things. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like, that's, like, I'm not good at platformers, but I'll sit down and watch a few hours of people going really fast through the game that I can barely make it through a level or two. Yeah, th those are the kinds of people that we want them playing Bacon. Um, I mean, we want everyone playing Bacon. People who are speedrunning, they will find a lot of complexity of trolls in the environment that allows them to, um, I would almost say, exploit the game. It makes it really interesting, very different from someone uh, more casually. Uh, it's a great experience either way, but for the hardcore players, it's really engine. Yeah, you want to see how fast you can do something. Competition. Oh, yeah. I mean, we, I've seen players at... Uh, we do like some, every once in a while we do a pension and we see players come over they'll sit down and sometimes people won't get up like we have to kick them off the game because they're just trying to find out ways to go faster and faster or um get past a certain area and uh i was amazed when i once saw someone you know knock an enemy into the air and then kick them across a ledge and then uppercut them get more air and then double jump and then dash and i was like holy crap this person stayed to be 30 seconds we weren't i was never expecting that yeah you can never underestimate underestimate uh like i won't say nerdy guy but like nerdy guys are always the best at those things yeah gamers are really smart uh if you give them an opportunity to explore controls and learn about mechanics they will find things to expect and i always love that about uh, watching people play my game like watch people play bacon man the coolest experiences especially if it's like nothing well and speaking of having you know multiple folks playing i saw that you guys are going to have local co-op is there any plans for any kind of network co-op in the future oh i wish yeah network games are tricky um you really have to engineer from the start to be network compatible and when we started building Bacon Man, it was so long ago, we were so inexperienced. The game was originally a Flash game. So right off the bat, network, not really something we're thinking about. If I could go back in time with what I know now, I would have definitely built it from the ground up to be an online networked game. But um, I think there is also an additive forcing to play co-op on the couch. Uh, because when you get frustrated from them throwing you into the lava, you can turn and punch them in the face directly. <laughs> Yeah, there's no trash talk here. It's just let's take care of this. Yeah, there's no time for trash talk. Now, we talked about the speed, like speed running, but there, um, I was reading there is a story to it for the people who aren't going to try to go quick. Like there is some story. Yeah, definitely. Um, the game takes place across all of these different lands that are made out of food. So there's a wheat zone, there is the Call of Cheese um, Vegan Valley, where all the fruits and vegetables are. Uh, so it, it, there's a large world uh, that can be explored really over about 12 hours. So we estimate it's a pretty, a pretty long. That's if you're playing sort of the average player. Uh, if so, taking taking your to look around, enjoy the scenery a little bit. Uh, but yeah, at, at each, there's lots of different characters that are spread across the world. And there are a lot of hidden characters as well. And the conversations that you have are usually pretty comical. We try to keep things very lighthearted and there's a story, but it doesn't take itself very seriously. Uh, which I think is kind of important in that if you want to concentrate a lot on the gameplay and, and speedrunning that if people want to stop and speed. Well, yeah. and as a father and a fan of dad jokes, I gotta say, I love all the puns. <laughs> and the punny names. <laughs> oh yeah, they're, they're everywhere. <laughs> sometimes, sometimes more hidden than they're all over. That's fun too, like getting to come up with some ideas for writing for food-based characters. You get to think a lot about like, hmm, what, <laughs> what food would fit the personality or what what you know silly puns can we come up with for for these i don't know there's all sorts of come across all the time well so i guess one of those it's might be a little more adult oriented but i have to ask pork king if you say that pretty fast was that intentional <laughs> uh maybe <laughs> yeah probably yeah i can imagine like i don't know how you guys like communicated back and forth but like anytime you got like a random little idea what about so and so like i can imagine a lot of random weird text and emails sent back and forth. Oh yeah, it, it, it gets weird for sure. <laughs> uh, we've known each other for so long, we're pretty much comfortable with, you know, having any discussion about game story, mechanics, uh, any subject with each other. So yeah, definitely. We Part of the problem is there are so often so many good ideas. You want to get everything in and you have to be very selective about what you choose because games can explode in scope really easily um you know bacon man is definitely an ex a, a scope explosion game it, sh it could have been a 2 year but you just come up with an idea for this and an idea for that and someone's like funny and in somewhere else and blah 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 and by the time that you're done five years back like holy crap we took a long time to make that huh 
I, but I you don't didn't think make I have it anywhere, but you should use that. <laughs> this game is a scope explosion. <laughs> <laughs> it, it is, it is. Like, you know, when, when you're first starting, we were coming right out of college when we first started making bacon, and we rebuilt the game from the ground up. A total of probably three times. That's a that's a lot of work. You get really good at, at uh, learning something new. You look back at older work that you hate the quality. You want to go and redo it. You end up redoing it, and then you check your watch. Oh my God, it's three months. You know, it's like holy crap. The time flies. But you don't get mo you don't make money making games, and like shipping. Games. That's part of the problem. Like everybody's got a cool idea, but ideas are kind of like farts. You know, everybody has them, and most of the time they. Judging by my Steam library, I would uh, yeah, I do agree. And I've I've bought into a lot of those farts. Bought oh, yeah. into way too many. It's a. It, I think they said. Uh, 2017, 30, there are now, 2018, there are now 30 something games coming out every single day on Steam. Yeah, I think when G listed the numbers, he said something like over 7,000, maybe close to 8,000 games came out last year. That's just insanity. It's completely crazy, yeah. It, and for developers, it's really, uh, it's a very scary time because there, there is a lot of, there are lots of really high quality titles coming out, and you have to do triple the amount of marketing and have all the right kinds of this and that in order to get your game seen because e even though you can have a really great concept you're competing against 30 something games when yours comes out so not to mention all the other ones throughout that week um, and when you're competing for dollars go on sale they want to buy the more price and blah, blah blah very very tough to games as an indie developer it's tough jolly i felt like i was hogging the mic a little bit at the beginning so i was waiting for you to take the next one <laughs> i didn't know what you were doing i thought you were writing something my bad so as I was watching the um, the various trailers that were on the uh, Kickstarter page, I was I was enjoying the music. Like, uh, how did you get in touch with the guys or guys who did the the music? It was that another one of the college friends or somebody you met later? The music was done by Kyle Landry and Braxton Burks. Uh, Kyle is a professional pianist and uh, he's a classically and Braxton is an arranger and composer and uh, originally i met kyle because he grew up in the same hometown as me uh, we met through a mutual friend and we just hit it off uh, so when i was we were both in school and i told him about the, this game idea they're gonna start working on he was like yeah i want to make a video game soundtrack that sounds cool uh, so he he hopped on it right and he ended up um realizing there are a lot of things in the game soundtrack that would make it a little bit more uh robust um, so he ended up contacting Braxton Burks. We met Braxton, and Braxton, he's unbelievable at taking not only Kyle's ideas, but also his own ideas and turning them into big, grand orchestral tracks. So the game has 40 songs. Um, each song is, uh, is classical, composed, and arranged. And they it's an unbelievable soundtrack. Like, I think if the game sold like shit, the soundtrack will still be, a, I think, a cult favorite, which is pretty really i think that speaks for itself when do you guys I, I mean i'm assuming there's a like a typical soundtrack for each level and then do you switch it up for the boss battles or we do yeah each level has its own theme but um each boss also has and in some cases will themes uh, and, and a lot of the soundtrack is uh, so you'll hear motifs between tracks um, in between character themes that you know reflect a particular situation does the soundtrack for a level change based on the the character you're playing or no it does not, but that was actually something we talked about for a while. Um, I think that that would have been a cool thing, but the amount of work on Braxton to do it, it almost would have been like composing the same song four times. Oh, um, yeah. <laughs> to, to make it sound quite, so it was tricky, but yeah, that would have been a real. Well, can you talk a little bit about any of the boss battles? Uh, you know, what folks can kind of expect out of that type of experience when, once they get to that point? Yeah, definitely. Um, so there are... There's one boss in particular that his name is Excalibur. The boar wields a sword, uh, <laughs> and <laughs> Excalibur, uh, you fight multiple times. Dan. He's your rival. It's the same style boss fight, um, a sort of cage match style fight, but he teaches you new moves at the end of each fight. So he's kind of teaching you how to play, but also um, acting as a progressively more difficult boss to face. But then there are also bosses that are a little bit more general, so they are different boss to boss. One example would be Unagi. He is a giant uh, eel who is made out of like ice 
and he, that lo that's a very large boss, huge scope. You have to, you know, sort of jump up him in order to dodge things. Uh, those are very different from the smaller kit style bosses like Excalibur. I see, like, you, you, like you're sneaking a tutorial in there a little bit. Yeah, there's, if, if you guys, I don't know if you guys are into uh, the Mega Man series, like Mega Man X in particular. I tried a few of the Mega Mans throughout the years, the younger days, you could say. Mega Man X, uh, there's a great video by uh, Ego Rap on you about Mega Man X, about this character X who, who teaches you, teaches Mega Man, the player, um, how to play the game by showing you what you can potentially do. And Excalibur X, in a sense, very similarly. He shows you moves that you're not able to do yet, but they make you go, oh, I really want to learn. You have to beat him in order for him to show how to do it. Yeah, I got you. So you're learning from the, the my bad, starting that over. Yeah, I got you. You're learning from the different boss battles as you go, like progressing yourself. Um, I want to say there's a leveling system also that you're going to be able to level yourself up a little bit as you play the game. Yeah, but definitely. This is an example of systems that probably people, I don't know how many people are going to really figure out how to maximize these sorts of systems, but they exist. And if people use them, they can find very different ways to play the game. Um, you can level your character, and uh, every time you level, you can enhance uh, your attack or your defense. So that will make you more powerful and be able to take more hits. Uh, there's also some, so that's kind of an RPG element. There's also things like uh, items, which or rather they're, they're not called items. They're basically like equips is the best way to put it. And what they do is modify the behavior of your character or your attacks. So you might have one that makes it so you can't shoot in your butt, do you double damage, when, um, or you're less, you're more resistant to a certain type of damage. Um, there are elemental, different elemental uh, damages and attacks that you can do that have bigger effects on certain types of enemies and can have certain effects on you as well. I would get destroyed in this game so many times. I'm guessing there's a death count after every level. There is a secret death count, <laughs> but we do not, uh, we don't put it in your face, but we do count all sorts of really interesting statistics. <laughs> and uh, they are accessible, but only by spe sp under specific circumstances, I'll put it that way. I got you. That was, uh, I want to say, Super Meat Boy it was one of the games that, like, let me know how many times I died trying to do that level. Yes, yes. It, Meat Boy is a great example of small levels that you play through and die a lot quickly. Um, Bacon Man has large levels with small sections that you play through and die quickly, but then learn a particular mechanic you then reuse through the rest of the level. Um, so if, say, you do die on this level, are you, are you starting the level all over again, or some kind of checkpoint system here? Yeah, you don't start the level all over again. Uh, there are checkpoints. And uh, when you die, your the screen sort of wipes, and then you're quickly put back at the. Uh, the The reward comes from playing bite-sized sections of levels that are extremely difficult, and push the player as much as possible to think about all the moves that they can potentially use in order to tackle a particular situation. And by the time that they get to the check, they feel like a god. You start to believe you become Neo. I see what you're going for. You truly become the Bacon Man. And I'm I'm really appreciative of the whole checkpoint system because yeah uh, man you get so close to the end on some levels and yeah one little slip up yeah yeah no most definitely yeah, I mean, that's the thing it's like some games if they put you all the way back in the beginning that's too frustrating um we try to strike a balance especially in the first half to be fair to the player but it does get progressively more difficult and if you screw up especially the second half it's on you and the checkpoint distances are a little bit longer i am uh i'm thinking Draconis, and then we're gonna have to get the game when it does come out. Have a little internal bamsters who can do it the fastest. Whoever does doesn't have to do so and so this week. <laughs> Exchange uh, having to do audio editing. <laughs> I'm not. No, I'm not even getting in that competition. <laughs> I don't know. The only way to like win to that is audio. not to participate. Uh, yeah, it's just like, uh, oh god, what was that movie? The only way to win is not to play. Oh damn it. <laughs> I remember that too, but I'm having a hard time pulling that frame of reference from my mind. They're uh, they're making a game based on that as well. Um, oh god, now it's gonna drive me nuts. I have to go and Google it. It's War Games. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, the yeah the movie War Games. Yeah, it, there's actually an indie game developer who's making a war game game uh, right now. That's supposed to be pretty interesting. It's the same person who did the um, the game Her Story for iOS, which if you haven't checked that out, that's a really great game. Check out. 
a lot of uh, like the live action video used in that. Well, I see in our notes here that Jolly put something about character customization and locking different costumes. Is that? Uh, can you talk a little bit about more how that works? Yeah, characters uh, each have their own skins, different skins that you can unlock. Uh, so the game has a couple of different unlockable items. One is uh, artwork that is uh, concept art and Kickstarter backer rewards and all sorts of cool stuff. And then the other is skins, and skins just change the look of the uh, change the look of your character. Uh, don't have any really the character's behavior, but we have all sorts of different superheroes that we like, or uh, movie stars, or other video game or media that we want to pay homage to. See, that's what I like in games. Like, I, I like customizing myself. I like I like looking pretty. I can't I can't lie. It's it's good to uh, it's good to be able to put on like a little bacon ballerina tutu or something if you want to do that. Why not? That, that would be bam right there. I was just yeah, telling him he should start doing that for when he streams on Twitch. I was saying yoga pants, as I was calling them, broga pants. Wow, I haven't heard that. That's a good one. I'll keep my back pocket there. Ah, you should, should. Number one seller right there. It's funny how they take a lot of normal, uh, <laughs> very normal bro or something, and uh, it becomes a men's product. <laughs> That's, it works perfect. So I see you guys had, were successfully funded on Kickstarter a couple of years back now. Um, can you talk a little bit about that process, the things that you did to prepare for that, and um, you know what that was like going into that? And I don't know exactly because I, I didn't even find out about this game until uh, Jolly brought it up to us. So, like, at what pro, at what point in the process did you guys fund? Was it you know up front or towards the end? Uh, yeah, I'd say we were probably uh, oh gosh, uh, maybe a third of the way into development when we decided to uh, go for Kickstarter. And then we had a really, <laughs> just straight up, we didn't have, we, but compared to other Indians, which were in the similar, in a similar uh, price point, I think we were asking for like $20,000. We didn't have as many backers as you would get. However, our backers, for whatever reason, seem to want to pledge more than the average. Uh, I guess people liked the concept and People either sort of got it right away and were like, oh, this is a big joke game about bacon. It's also a platform, and I like those two things. Or they were sort of turned off by one thing or the other and didn't back. But those who did spent a lot more, which was pretty interesting. We've also got a, it's kind of a weird story. Uh, I had paid for a press release. I want to say it was like a hundred bucks. It was the best money I'd ever spent for marketing. Um, and it was supposed to go out to the video game and tell everyone, hey, you know, there's this thing going on, this game Bacon Man on Kickstarter, you check it out. And what I discovered was the press release service had accidentally mislabeled it. And it somehow wound up in the uh, food restaurant food service. And all of a sudden, I got this message like toward the end of the Kickstarter camp from someone who's like, oh yeah, we, we're a we're, uh, backer, we're interested in talking to you on the phone, it's a really big thing. And I was like, that sounds like a scam, something sounds weird about this, I don't really know what to say about it. Well, it ends up, I, I was going to ignore it, because I figured it was spam or something, but it ends up, it was actually Denny's Restaurants, Denny's Diner, <laughs> and they came on board and packed back the game at the highest tier. They spent like a thousand dollars, and that sausage character that I was telling you about earlier is actually a secret Denny's character in the game. <laughs> I mean, if you want to have an accident happen, that's the kind of accident you want to happen. I mean, it was bacon, so I guess that's why they labeled it for the restaurants and stuff. Yeah, I mean, it, it's sort of it's a sort of marketing strategy because they didn't really have as much to gain from that as we did, but. They do have like these bacon specific menus at Denny's that they do once a year and all sorts of stuff like that. So it sort of fits with their grand strategy of weird breakfast. It's the two o'clock in the morning. I'm drunk and need to get, you know, <laughs> some pancake kind of <laughs> mentality. So they definitely know their audience, but it, I thought it was something really funny and restrained. Yeah, and people are on the go. You got to get some food in you. What better place than Denny's? So are they going to feature Bacon Man on any of their menus? Or are they were they asking to use the artwork for the character or anything like that? God, I wish. Uh, well, I can't say I wish. I'm sort of glad they're not going to do that because I feel like it would actually sort of ruin certain things about the game by commercializing it too much. Um, so on the one hand, I'm, I'm glad that they're... Uh, but on the other, I think there would probably be an interesting opportunity for cross-promotion, but I don't know whether or not they would do it. They mostly go through other marketing means. Uh, and those companies are really the ones that make most of the decisions, so I have no idea. Slip some some uh, some game keys and some uh, on the receipts or something. I can see it happening. 
gosh, that'd be that'd be hilarious. Yeah, I mean, it's you know everybody plays video game. Why not, right? I mean, they could sneak it on there and not even tell anybody, and nobody would know. Not, I wouldn't say nobody, but like it's how many people notice the survey? It's on the receipt. Oh yeah, no one no one does that. I mean, it, yeah, you throw the code at the bottom, and maybe one person in a million goes, "Oh, it looks kind of like a." Steve be a lot better than post it on Twitter where a robot's going to get it. But yeah, I mean, you mentioned how the, your backers are backing you at a higher, higher average than the normal indie game. But I mean, wh why wouldn't they? Like, what a um, great patriotic American wouldn't want a guy that's a bacon man rocking a red, white, and blue outfit? I mean, if you don't like concept, it's you're just un-American. I'm sorry. Unpatriotic. Shame on you. Wait, wait, wait. If you do love the concept, does that make you more American? Because I'm wondering if if uh, <laughs> if we make Bam an honor honorary American. <laughs> if Bam plays the game and and likes the character, then he is automatically, by definition, an American. It's I will just I will gift him a key on Steam. It's just if he live streams, because I really want to see him try to play it. Because Bam is somewhat like me, but way clumsier. If you like watching your friends struggle, this is a good game. <laughs> I didn't even notice if there was like a like a group buy option on Steam or not. I think I could probably grab a couple. I'm happy to give you guys some. No worries. Judging by the number of games I have on my Steam list, I'm pretty sure I could probably get it, get it. Draconis over here though. I know how he is. I would expect like a little nudge on Discord or something. <laughs> Wait a minute. How did I end up getting attacked here? <laughs> that wasn't an attack. America didn't attack America. We tried that once. It didn't work out too well. <laughs> What kind of games are you guys uh, usually playing on the on the podcast or, or in general? Well, all kinds of things. Um, just for fun and my own free time, a lot of shooters, some RPGs, and the occasional strategy game. But uh, recently, I've started playing a few other things just to kind of branch out. And plus, it's fun for kind of like a palate cleanser to play something like some of the old school arcade games. So this this was one of those things that looked like it'd be kind of fun because I haven't played a 2D platformer in a while. I personally, I try to keep a couple platformers on there. Like I said, Super Meat Boy is on, I don't remember where I bought it from, but I definitely got that. I never beat the thing. Um, it's just for like the, the random, I got an hour to kill. I'm going to try a couple levels. I always have a little bit of uh, the storytelling that Naughty Dog does over on the PlayStation. So Uncharted, uh, Last of Us. Try to get a little PvP in with some uh, like Fortnite, maybe a little PUBG on the PC, but Fortnite on PS4. I think Friend the last platform. Just... Oh, go ahead, sorry. Well, as I was gonna say, I think the last platform I played was uh, the one that Jolly suggested was Duck Game, and that was kind of fun. Yeah, that was another PC game that was very much you wanted to use a controller and not the keyboard. Yeah. I find that happens more often than not. Like, I, there's not a lot of the play that said, "Oh, this is better with a mouse and keyboard," except for maybe. Sh yeah, it's definitely FPS or third person. That's the only ones I could see being far superior. I'm willing to admit it's far superior. PUBG on PC, mouse and keyboard. Like, I would not even want to try key control over that. Uh, well, I guess I'd, I'd shooters... go so far as to say strategy games as well as RPGs are better with a mouse and keyboard as well. But definitely I... any kind of or racing game that, or, or like, say, the platforming games, those are better with a controller. Well, I mean, games yeah. I would play. Strategy games, I don't have very much strategy, man. Go forward. Do you guys ever play, like, uh, City Skylines, anything like that? That sounds like something G, I think, plays. He's more into, the like, the, the city-building games. Uh, strategy games that I've played are, are more about... Uh, well, I'll, I'll play those with a buddy of mine who's really into strategy games, and I let him build up the army and protect the front lines, and I just sit back and build the super weapons so I can destroy them all at the end. <laughs> <laughs> Like uh, like games like kind of Command and Conquer kind of game. Yeah, those are typically the type of strategy games we'll play at our land sessions. Oh, I love I love Command and Conquer. At Starcraft back when that was more popular, I think it's still pretty popular. That will yeah, never go in, away. Yeah, I didn't get into Starcraft too much only because um, I just I always felt like the screen was just too close and it didn't let you zoom out far enough. But um, yeah, Command and Conquer. One of the ones we've been playing is Active Aggression. That's another good one that's similar to Command and Conquer. And then there's a, a space one that. Uh, we've played a lot over the years, which is Sins of a Solar Empire. I've heard Sins is really good, and uh, actually this is kind of nice because we, I've been working on my own game for so long I haven't had the chance to get out and play some other stuff, so now i got my recommendation. <laughs> <laughs> Sins is good, but I will warn you, those matches can go for hours. Yeah, I was going to ask, um, what kind of games are you guys uh, playing when you're not um, like slugging through 
making your your five year game here. So I I usually return to the same few games. Um, I always go back to Halo, Counter Strike, and a game called Luminous, which is like a Tetris style rhythm. Um, those are my kind of go tos if I'm not really in the mood for trying something new. But if I'm looking for something new, I love a city building style game. Uh, Cuphead was was fantastic. Just trying to trying to branch out a little bit more. But um, also, a lot of us are Monster Hunter series. Uh, Monster Hunter we've been playing since the 3DS days. Um, I've actually played back on the PSP. But uh, Ryan, our, our artist, is a huge Monster Hunter. Loves them. Oh, well, if you like city building stuff, there's one in early access right now that we just uh, we interviewed them. I want to say it was maybe last episode or the one before called Hexters. And uh, it's funny, it's got some light strategy type elements to it, but it's it's more or less kind of like a city building type game. And uh, I, I didn't expect it to keep my interest past the initial curiosity phase, but I will say I kind of got sucked in and, and actually really enjoyed kind of, you know, exploring and building with that one. That sounds awesome. Yeah, I'll definitely check that one out. I'm pulling it up on Steam now. <laughs> That one got brought to our attention because of the name of the company. It's Draconis Entertainment. I was like, what? <laughs> oh, get out. There you go. Yeah, you got a video game coming to you. Come on, man. It's crazy. Yeah, I, I might have to poke these guys about getting an email um, at their company, you know. Because <laughs> they, they, their domain name is Draconis.com. Oh, they, you know, actually, you could do, like, Dracon.us. <laughs> ah, see what I did there? He, he, didn't, he didn't pick up on it, like... You don't watch out. I might steal it, Jacones. I'm just saying. <laughs> yeah, you gotta register that on. Oh, jeez. <laughs> I will steal your name, and well, I will. I will auction it off to you. Jolly at Jacone. It's a good email. I would. I would forget it. Like I, I forget my own email at uh, Babsters, as everybody <laughs> here would know. So I guess before we we turn to the what Bam likes to call the penultimate question, do you guys have future plans either for? additional content you plan to add to Bacon Man or sequels or DLC or anything like that? We would love to do some kind of Lost Levels expansion. Um, we had a lot of levels that we started building and unfortunately were cut because they were either too crazy or too difficult or one reason or another. I would love to go and revisit those and kind of flesh them out a little bit more um, and try to get those released for the um, console version. That would be pretty ideal, and then release them for free as a as a, a patch for the PC version. So that way, the console players get something new, the PC players gets everybody gets to have more levels. I would love to do something like that. I mean, yeah, there's so much to uh, like build off of. You can do like garbage disposal, call it shrink, all the stuff that was misused and stuff. It actually sounds like a fun idea. We could sort of take all the characters, cut them in half and stuff, like they fell down the garbage disposal, and they're kind of zombie-like, you know, limping toward Bacon Man, like, kill me, kill me, or something like that. I'm somewhat picturing uh, the uh, animated movie thing was called Sausage Fest. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that movie was out of control. Oh, my God. That was a hilarious movie. I loved that. I love Seth Rogen. Yeah, I got, a, I got a big kick out of that. My friend and I were, were blown away out of that movie. It was, it was amazing. Hot dog in a bun. That Water. crazy, like... That war scene with the powder and the flower and stuff flying up into there. I was like, well, I was not expecting this. It was pretty funny. I, I definitely, uh, yeah, it's probably some pretty good pull then. But yeah, like Jacronus mentioned a little bit ago, um, and I think I said it during the introduction, there's always been one question that uh, has weaved or bacon weaved every interview together. And at the end, we typically ask what your favorite kind of bacon is, like how you would like it prepared, and uh, what kind of alcoholic beverage you would pair it with. Great question. Okay, I am a big fan of BLT. However, um, I've got a very specific way of pairing it. So first off, it's got to be rye bread. It's uh, extra toasted. And then for the bacon or the fake, if you're a vegetarian, uh, extra crispy. Um, romaine lettuce, none of that iceberg shit. And uh, I would say, if you got it, pepper jack cheese is great, but provolone works well too. Uh, cheddar is great. I'm a big cheddar guy. And then um, put a little bit, not too much, otherwise you kind of drown it, a uh, Thousand Island dressing. And that's like a... Well, if you ever want to try something a little bit different, instead of the Thousand Island dressing, try peanut butter. What? You have been <laughs> pushing this peanut butter thing almost every time I ask this question. 
I, I have a maple bacon peanut butter combination agenda. <laughs> oh god, that sounds good. It it really is. Um, I discovered it a little bit by accident because there's a couple of restaurants out here in San Diego that do a, a bacon peanut butter hamburger or cheeseburger I should say and one of them is peanut butter and jelly and the the first place I went to they said well you know what if you don't like it we'll give you your money back so I thought well I got nothing to lose and now I don't want a cheeseburger without peanut butter on it it's kind of funny like it, it, it sounds disgusting but actually if you really take a moment to think about it it's probably insanely you've got sweet salty and kind of like a creamy taste all at once it's like that sounds pretty good oh yeah and it's really great if you do that with with uh like bacon pancakes as well so you use bacon pancakes with peanut butter and syrup on it it's phenomenal oh, that does sound good uh, i might have to give that a shot i uh I've found pretty replacing meat products, all sorts of weird fake meat stuff. Um, something that's popular in the UK, another thing to ask your buddy, bam, is, is about corn, Q-U-O-R-N. That's a really great meat replacement. It tastes like pretty much whatever you cook it with. I was going to say, I don't think bam is going to have any clue about meat replacements. <laughs> <laughs> the idea of meat replacement sounds sacrilegious to me. <laughs> I know, I know, it's crazy. I, it, you know, it's funny. Like five years ago, I, I was, I'm the kind, of, I was the kind of person, like, tons of steak, um, especially like any kind of red meat. I loved it. Um, but now, uh, it's funny. Like after a while, you start to not miss it. Probably, I'll start missing it again once I have it at the uh, Bacon Man uh, kickoff party on March 6th, because I'll, I'll be eating all sorts of uh, bacon then, and then I'll probably go back to eating meat again. Who knows? <laughs> I, I have sharp teeth, or at least, you know, some sharp teeth, so <laughs> i got to make use of them. Yeah, you got to use them. <laughs> I'm really hoping there's going to be somebody dressed up as Bacon Man at this, uh, this launch party. Yeah, that'll be me. <laughs> I like it. So you don't have to worry about how much you eat. That's true, yeah. I can just stuff my face and everyone will be like, oh, that's cannibalism. I was thinking, yeah, that's a little creepy, but yeah, I mean, I don't, I'm not going to blame you. It's bacon. Delicious. Well, before we get out of here, was there anything else you wanted to add before um, we cut off, cut it off for this interview? Yeah, well, uh, thanks so much for having me on the Bamsters podcast. This is a lot of fun. Um, if anyone wants to learn more about Bacon Man, they can check it out at baconmangame.com. Uh, they can also follow us on Twitter at SkyMapGames. Um, and Bacon Man occasionally goes on his own Twitter, is at Air, um, like heir to the throne. And uh, sometimes if you tweet it and he'll respond to you. It depends on whether he's in the... I like it. And the game launches March the 6th. Yeah, so don't forget to go and wishlist it on Steam until then. Yeah, thanks so much, guys. Nah, man, thank you for coming on. We appreciate it. Plus, uh, it's it's probably... A, I, I think this might be the first game we didn't have to try and convince the developer to put bacon in the game. <laughs> We've tried sneaking yeah, in there a few times. You know, a lot of developers, they like game characters in their other games, so we might have bacon in every video make from now on. There should Probably. definitely be Easter eggs. Or bacon egg? Bacon slices? Let's just say that. Bacon and eggs. <laughs> so, uh, we definitely got to stay in touch, and when you're working on your next one, <laughs> give us a ring. 